Good morning, welcome to the Minutes. My name is Levi Kodas. Two weeks ago, I hosted a gentleman here who talked about his professional part, how he went to college and how he dropped out of college and inspired with alcoholism that consumed him, leading him to a deep, desolate, and dark path. He's here for part two of his story. His name is Tony Kibet. Karibu sana. Ah, Sante. So happy to be back again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Happy to have you here. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. Tony, mm -hmm. uh, just in a nutshell, for those guys who are joining us for the first time, because there's always that somebody who's watching today for the yeah. first time, just give a brief summary of your, your, your story. Yeah, so uh, sitting in front of you uh, is Tony Kibet. I'm a addict, and uh, this is my eighth year clean, uh, free from uh, drugs, living a life of triumph, a life of freedom. And uh, I like going by the name Mr. Drugs is Swag. Uh, my life story, my, my drugs really started out of uh, a broken relationship. It's something that, um, for me, it gives me understanding of what happens with this whole thing of messing up. Because time, you know, I'm sure people, Uneza Shanga, how comes there are people who drink? And yet, they don't mess up. Their life in mm. Kalea Vizuri sana. They come out of Kazi, Kalea Vizuri. Come out of Shule, they're even excelling at school. But I came to understand you never know when you'll cross that line. It's a, it's a thin line. But I never say it's, it's, mm. it's a blurry line. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not can, whereby you won't get to that uh, that other side of, of, of drinking and so mine was through a broken relationship uh, which happened in college in 2011 mm -hmm. and uh, it led I mean the things that were going through it was not just the drugs but a poor esteem a very ruined esteem, uh, feelings of empty feelings of worthlessness and so I went to the bottle I went to the drugs trying to fill that void you know and uh, 2012 was the darkest year. Hiyo ndiyo mwaka. Sasa mimi lakini mafans na wale wanatusikiza mimi nitawarifamu ende YouTube. Mkasikiza ile story because I gave my, uh, my, my story of things that happened in 2012 mm. uh, which was the darkest year of my mm -hmm. addiction. Where on YouTube? Tell them. Uh, it's on uh, Cast TV mm -hmm. and uh, also we've shared on our YouTube page which is Triumph Ministry uh, hyphen Triumph NGO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you shared there. Now, um, uh, you got clean eight years ago. Yes. People always ask one question. Has it been? Actually, it's nine years ago because it's 2021 and uh, it's 2012. 2012. Yes. How many months? Uh, for three months. For three to months. Be specific, 91 days. I'm going to get rehab. 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 Do you think you are going to be able to uh, finish the, the rehab sessions? Let me tell you something honestly, uh, and I don't know why in life some of these things tuna kujanga kuzi on a much, much later. Like for, for me, when you were mm. while in rehab, we used to feel like uku tumefungiwa, tunona nikama, it's like our family rejected us, tuka wekwa uko, you know, mm -hmm. like sasa now the, all the black sheep of, yeah. of various families, sasa mewekwa uko ndani. But do you know, much later in life, una kanku realize that you will kwa Bahamas, that was like a vacation. Imagine three months to just reflect. Just, just reflect. Hmm. I mean, it's like ni kama kuenda holy de Mombasa. There was nothing different as in just go there. And by the time we get to the people who are here, we get to the people who are here, we get to the As in, so it's like we are away from that life of looking hmm. over your shoulder. There was a break. Yeah, now you're in, you're in a safe place. Aku hapa hakuna mtu anakutafuta. Hakuna mtu atideni yake, anakukuja kukutafuta. Hmm. But imagine while in rehab we felt... Yani, ato kiongezewa siku moja, let's say, ulikuna juta discharge your certain date. Ukiongezewa siku moja, you feel so discouraged, you know? Mm. So that's why for me it was 91 days. It was 91 days, wow. Yeah. You, you know, you count every day because yeah. you're thinking it's more, more, more like a prison. Yeah, yeah. And imagine... Was it your choice to go to rehab? No. Uh, and like 90% of, of, of the guys there... And even in the course of my outreach as after and rehab, yeah. Wengi, uh, it's so not tell us, how did you, uh, what was the story like to get to rehab? Able to party your story. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was an interesting one. Uh. Well, it was actually two weeks after um, I've been suspended from college. Mm -hmm. So, like I shared in that uh, previous interview, uh, my rock bottom, my lowest point was where 
after you know home hakujakalika i felt like the black sheep of that family after nime you know like with all in the midst of all that you know uh, torture you know physical and uh, i know it's like psychological torture sasa naambiwa you are going home for one year you know at least in the course of my addiction i used to have a, I used to reside at a school hostel so akukua na ile akukua na friction nyumbani but now i was imagining i'm going to this home where i felt sipendwi so that for me that was the lowest point so i was at home for 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 for, for two weeks and na kumka and this is in the month of september i was handed the the suspension letter ilikuwa inasoma ilikuwa inasoma the 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 suspension is for one year mm-hmm. you know so for two weeks i was now at home uh, my schedule kila asubuhi ilikuwa kuna kitu tunaitwa wake and bake mm-hmm. so yangu ilikuwa tu ni asubuhi kuamka ku smoke and then my diet ilikuwa anga mkate mkate super loft ya kawaida mm-hmm. blue band na toaster so ilikuwa tu ni kupaka mkate blue band ku toast <laughs> as in diet meal to mm-hmm. full day zikishuka as in sasa hiyo haina sikishuka weed tena mm. mkate blue band zikishuka eh leo toaster ilikuwa ni baba wangu fulani eh. so neighbor alikuwa na shanga kwa nini haurudishi hii toaster yangu eh hey, what's your plan si unurudishie toaster <laughs> lakini nikimuona ni kona tu kona you know so time when um, and i used to psychologist so my dad used to take me to a certain psychologist so that psychologist aka float idea kupelekwa rehab and you see even uh, in, in my last mm. sharing uh, like i said nilikuwa ni admit you in a psychiatric ward two times mm. so i used to think that was rehab so hata nikitoka hiyo psych ward na nikirudi kole na ambia uh, my guys i've been to rehab hey but now this doctor tells me about a certain place where i'm supposed to be confined yeah for 90 days mm. <laughs> hey it was ridiculous i was like how you know we unamanishaje hivyo so uh in a way i that thing that thing as in as it, was, it was in the back of my mind you know mm. so one morning it was 19 september 2012 so my dad came very early in the morning ile hata sijamka it's mzuri, funny you know mtu mtu wa kukua hai anakumbuka hiyo date eh so say you know hiyo ndo siku ulifumaniwa yeah mm. so he came with two guys uh walikuwa wakubwa you know so kama tuma bouncer yani mm. So one was very one was soft with me and aniongelesha tu vizuri eh but the other one was like he was there for business you know mm. and then my dad pia that day akaniambia i'm being taken for counseling so one of these two guys the one was soft with me akaniambia hata usijali hata kitanda usitandike hata usioge tunaenda tu hapa mudhaiga uh, we're just going to a counseling place and we'll be back you know but i had this thing in the back of my mind you yeah, know? there's something i'm missing yeah you know like a gut feeling ile ai hapana aje sasa you know mbona asubuhi hivi you know mm. <laughs> so I, i i just played it cool you know mm. thanks to this guy this guy who was soft with me you know so nikaingia tu gari uh, although nilikuwa nimesha leta uh, rebellion flan you know hata nikawa nimejifungia kwa bafu mm. you know but this guy persuaded akani persuade so we entered the car but now that feeling that i had nikawa nimejiambia wherever we are going me so like si nimeka back left kwa gari so my dad is driving then one of the guys then huyu wa kuni sweet talk tuko tumeka naye nyuma mm. so in my mind i was like ni saa twendeni kule tunaenda but nilikuwa tu rada mali tunafika mimi nikiona tu rehab or anything of the sort mm. langu singiyo nayo nayo ah yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this guy yeah. told me we are going to mudhaiga yeah. na mudhaiga sasa you see when you are living where i stay when yeah. you are living Uh, where is the mudaiga ni the right side of the road mm. lakini sasa sisi tumetoka tume join main road thika road and now tuna proceed tunaenda tu tukienda so i asked this guy kwa ni si umesema tunaenda mudaiga so ah naniambia usijali ni shortcut tuna tunachukua so i don't know as in uh, na nadhani tu skill yani psychologically nini as in the guy just managed to convince me to convince me mpaka mimi nikashtuke tuko limuru so the next time na gutuka no na same body ya limuru girls So I ask him again. Hi. Tuko chokes, tuko limuru. What do you mean? Mm. Ah, naniambia relax. And so the guy was just calm with me. Wey relax, you mm. know? Na yangu pia najiambia wherever it is you are going, nikiona sign ya rehab. Na ndio mtanijua. Hey, but then uh, so it was so this rehab that I went to ilikuwa tu just after Limuru Girls. Naenda mm-hmm. tu kwa it's a green place, but then the place looks really nice. Mm. Uko kuna kuna njeve mbaya. Eh. Hey. Mm. and then sasa mali sasa gari tulitan like now facing outside the gate 
I mean Leona to like a lavish home, you know, in a katu how poor, you know. So like it didn't click. So I was like in cartoon me chill, you know. Now once the big gate was opened, so as you are driving in through the reception, Nikona something, something, uh, rehabilitation. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. maze, hands down, and you And the security guy was so huge. I knew get I knew I knew I knew Hands down, you know. You're not out. Kasematu ni sawa, you know. <laughs> Shoni le well played. Mm. Na nika kubali. But uh, again, uh, I, I was so angry at my parents because I felt, you know, I felt like, why couldn't you just talk to me? But uh, now, as speaking now, I know hata nengi ongelesho singe kubali. You see, that psychologist mm. that told me about it. So nika ingia tu, and uh, for one month, uh, okay, by the way, the, the one beautiful thing I found with rehab is that I found, yani, Imagine you're, you're coming from a, a place where you felt alone. You, you, you were in a world where you felt alone. Things were happening and like, wow, mm. what is, you know, like you feel alone. But now, coming to a place where you share a story uh, and, you know, like you're sharing the same yeah. experiences, you know. So that thing was really... Um, you found guys who you could, yeah. uh, uh, what's it called? You could have some camarader uh, camaraderie with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And so for one month, I was cool. As in, I, I, I found good friends. We share a story, we share experiences. Even that which, uh, like for myself, I felt was the worst. Ah, unapata mwingine na kuambia ingine, you know? So, and you're like, enyewe. So, yani, so that, that really yeah. helps. So, life. life after rehab, Tony, when you, mm. left, when you left rehab, mm. um, was it, um, were you confused by your circumstances outside? Was it shocking? Uh, did you feel like you were taking baby steps? How did you start? I can tell you confusing is an understatement. You know, if I can just get a word to express what I felt, then it will be uh, like confusion on steroids, you know? Because, and later I came to realize there's a thing called halfway, sober house. Mm, so the I halfway didn't go, house, yes. Yeah, mm. I, didn't, I didn't go for that. So for me, it was confusing. And I left uh, Sony Lingia 19, uh, September 2012. I left on 21st December, uh, the same year, 2012. So remember, this is the time of festivities. Now, Facebook was uh, quite popular at that time also. So many can post kwa Facebook. My guys, hey, maze ni aje, mchanga, maze ni metoka rehab. I'm back, you guys. Hey, na kuambia ata siku kasa, na simu zikanza kulia. You know, my, 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 my old friends. Ah, mm. uh, wanataka wanikaribisha maze ma, na ma, mm. ma drinks. Now that was, I, that, that, that was hard, mm. that was hard. They say the relapse is part of recovery. Did that occur to you? Uh, okay, me, uh, okay, me, whatever I went through, I usually don't like calling it relapse. Because I, I got to drink time to time. Because, well, actually, when I left rehab, I came out with a passion in music, you know? And that time I was doing for, like, the first uh, four to six months. 2013, I was doing secular music. So during one video shoot, a uh, video shoot, Flani, uh, a song that I had recorded, that night we drank, you know? Ah, but waking up, I was like, ah, you know what, as in, you know, it's something I really just wanted to forget about. So for me, uh, I didn't, I, that statement I wouldn't really agree with, mm. you mm. know? Because relapse is something, it's the worst. Mm. I mean, it's worse than even. Relapse takes you right back. But it's kind of like you lost your way a bit, mm. but somehow, went back to factory settings and like, yeah. should I really do this? Yeah, and uh, you know, for me, so I, I, I thank God for, you know, like for a support system because my family, uh, for starters, was very supportive. Like they were hands-on, you know, hands-on support. What do you need? Where are you? You know, like how can we, how can we be with you in this journey? So for me, that really, really helped. Mm. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's really easy, you know, because that confusion is, because it's like you've come from this world where, uh, you know, like nowadays people say I'm sensitive, you know, that wasn't me before rehab. And I usually think to myself, it's something that became part of my uh, personality while in rehab because we went through a phase whereby it's love that actually made us, you know, that helped us conquer this thing. So you come out to a world where this is the world, this is a cold world. So unajua rehab, like you care about your brother, you know, you're always sharing, you know, you're always uh, doing you know, like sharing, like you're helping each other in this sobriety. But you come back now, you come out to this world where what you know? And as a man, 
people don't want to know about your journey. People don't want to know whether you had a low esteem. You know, as in society, who inje to people are cold. You know, oh. so that was it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a critical thing. Yeah, people don't care. Mm. Yeah. So, what would you um, uh, attribute your staying sober to? Um, oh, number one. By the way, let, let me just take you back, Idogo, back to rehab. Nilingia 19th September, okay? Now, this rehab, like many other rehabs, they had a policy of no visits, no phone calls for, for one month. So, like I told you, that one month, me, I was easy. Mazen me pata ma beste. So, after one month, one month from 19th September, ni 19th October. Hi, now, 20th is a holiday, sindio. So now, uh, knowing in my heart, me ni me cooperate, I've been a good boy during this uh, program of the rehab. Now on 19th, I went to ask for uh, a phone call, you know, like for my counselor, because I felt nearly you are 20th, so mm. uh, my parents will most likely be free to come visit me. Maze wakani nyima phone ni usiku. 19th, akani, you know, akani zungusha hapa hapa, tikuja kesho. 20th, akakata sasa kunyambia live live anipati simu. Now that he can set back. Shona ile sasa sire karudi tu ile ile ya kwanza day one. And then I have a good friend, he's called Bob. I'm sure he'll be watching this. So me na Bob tulikuwa nae high school. Ayi ya ya nikenda nika insight Bobby. Nika mwambia Bobby, we need to leave this place. Ah, watu wame ni enjoy. Hatu wame kata kunipea simu. And so we packed our things and took a ruka fence. Uh, uh, an adventure which turned so tragic. Your fence ili to kata vibaya sana. Vi adi, you show na fence ina kata adi viatu, like zile razor. It was, yani ili backfire. So we were even caught. Na, na ujue, say, told you that that place, as in mostly it's, uh, uh, it's you know, like the kind of people mm. who live there, ni watu wenye, you go at, sasa, you know, we, 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 tuliruka fence, then tukena tukajificha kwa, kwa nyumba ya mtu. And you know, someone was telling us, those are residents, these are my residents, and you work on a private guns. And because you trespassed, unaeza shutiwa, mm. you know? Hey, so it was such a risky thing. Tuka shikwa, tuka rudish wandani, you know? So that thing really upset me. It really upset my whole uh, your process your recovery. Mm. And therefore, to answer your question, for me, do you know my transformation actually came like two weeks before my date of being discharged, before your 21st? Because you were in yote after 20, 20th October, yeah. it was now pretense. Kucheza, kucheza, yani kucheza kaa wao sasa. Mm. Sinye mlini shika uh, meni uh, Let me do what you expect. Eh, uh, eh, I'll eh, get out of here. Bas. Do you know my transformation, like, ile, like, now the, yani ile, for myself, not changing for anyone, came only, like, one or two weeks before being this What did that entail? What and was? That, yeah, that's the thing I'm saying. I only, I can only credit it to God. Because he's the one who, and he end you on a service, our hearts, you know, like even when you don't know, as in his, and he, I just believe it's, it's the abundance of his love that one day you just wake up and you're like, whoa, anyway, I'm here, it's a privilege being here, yeah. you know, like that, that change of mindset, that complete change of mindset from, from seeing that will come from you, kwanza kuona wow, mm. you know, niletuwa po junapendo. So it's been nine years, what have you been doing in the nine years? Wow, the nine years have been exciting. I've been, uh, as in, uh, they've been really exciting. Uh, mostly because of this uh, assignment that God gave me uh, through a ministry called Triumph. And before even the, before we launched the ministry, uh, we initiated uh, uh, an initiative called Drug Swag. And this was after I met my mentor called Mose. Now this is someone who has been so instrumental in my life. Uh, like someone put it, uh, he's uh, Moses in my life, literally. And uh, figuratively, you know, mm. like a Moses, yani mtuana could deliver, you know, like from one end, you know, like to, to this other end. Mm. So I, I, I met him in 2014. He saw my gifts, he saw my, like he saw these things I'm passionate about. And he has been mentoring me spiritually, uh, even in terms of my career. Uh, even in, he told me about uh, the course, the course uh, for communication, which I now went to pursue in 2015. Uh, that one again was like a great addition to what I'm doing because now I'm able to do film, I uh, still have the gift of music, but I do music, you know, like uh, in collaborations na, na mashule, you know. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an artistic ministry uh, whereby through creative arts, film, music, uh, we are just reaching out to others. Mm. Mm. So you're talking to people and uh, what are you telling them, basically? Yeah, unajua sasa kuna, there are different categories. Number one, uh, kuna, like there's, uh, there's the audience of young people. Me na picture two boy mm. ka mimi. 
kampo umeingia na uko na psyche yote you believe drinking is the way is the way to be cool unaona so for that audience wa ganaambia ni aje ni sawa ni sawa i know it feels fun and all like but just like i said in the beginning of this we don't know that line you don't know when you'll cross over to become an addict and i think on that point kuna there there, there are these excerpts za gazeti nilikuwa nimebeba and i find this very uh, like something so noteworthy i gazeti skumbuki ilikuwa lini i i just cut it out lakini there is a here they are saying percentage of population that takes alcohol in kenya it's 35.4% now hapa chini there is another statistics ya kusema heavy drinkers slash addicts in population in kenya is 2.4% now that is a huge au ni watu wengi sana those are many families don't usiangalie at 2.4% don't look at it as individuals look at the families you know the homes so for 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 that particular audience mimi naambia ngatuniaje why don't you just find healthy ways of enjoying this youth you know and that's a thing that we do a lot you know as in uh, like come to drugs so you see even that from that from that tagline sisi tunaonesha my youth swag ni kusema zi kwa drugs you know in fact as a man i think it's the it's the most manly thing to do that mko kwa uh, let's say you in a gathering I'm, i'm actually giving a true story uh tulikuwa na gathering flani ya uh the wase tulikuwa now class 8 so we were meeting 10 years later after tumemanza class 8 now imagine being in such a gathering and you are able to stand out and say no mimi stop a take i mean mimi mm. sina mi, i don't have a problem with you mm. guys mm. drinking you have so your you, yeah yeah me me d- don't have a problem with me drinking you know and that's a thing that many young people what wananga yo awananga yo karija kusema zi me don't drink yeah the problem is because uh, the, the peer pressure is uh, focusing on you mm. not to stand out yeah because they are supposed to conform with mm. everybody else eh? yeah so hata wasio na kuenjoy Mm. Kwani uko aje na wasio unajibamba. That's a big issue yeah. in getting people to stay in, uh, in in drugs and alcohol addiction. Mm. And you know on this program we talk about drugs and, uh, and alcohol addiction practically almost every Friday. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons is because and I and I say this also for my viewers is because that you know there there are a lot of families right now mm. who have got somebody who is either drug addicted mm. or alcohol addicted. Mm either it's in your immediate family or mm. it's a cousin that you know or it's a sister yeah. a brother somebody you know i mean it's an epidemic mm. and it's so tragic that you know you can uh, so measure someone mm. take them through everything yeah. and then drugs just brings it down in a second yeah. Yeah, and i know you have the passion you're already talking to young people about it mm. do you feel like you're reaching them You know, you know uh mix about I like how you're breathed out there. <laughs> <laughs> ni challenge. Ni challenge by the way. and mm. you know by the for me it's a motivation because I know we are in a country where mm. man there's not enough awareness as in sometimes I feel like alone in it. Lakini like musema like right now mm. I was even sharing with you kabla tuanze interview. I just started a small segment uh on on digital media called Love to the Addict whereby I just ask people You know it's like I'm even influencing people you know what do you uh, do you have a message you know in your heart do you have a message for a drug addict out there just record yourself with a phone in one minute send it to me and then uh, with my skills to the editing nini I just make it uh, just mm. make it a bit more appealing you know like I took a background mm. music but the message is from actually uh, an ordinary person you know just mm. someone just as someone with with uh, with a message in their heart you know and of course uh such okay mimi in the case of videos probably at the end of the day or at the end of the week it won't have more than even uh, more than 20 views more than 50 views it won't but i'm so convinced like i just have to keep it doing you know mm. and, you know like to to keep doing it you know because i believe someone someone just needs to hear that message not come to come to moja because i i know there are situations where you may come across that vi- video on social media maybe you are not an addict yourself but you know someone and that someone in your life who joko kijo nini now after watching that one minute you're like wow you know this is actually a message i can share with this person you know mm. even you as a as a as a caregiver a parent umeko kishanga eh mbona mtoi wangu amekuwa kibie vivi amekuwa kibie vivi maybe after listening to that message you can understand ah 
So there's this thing called addiction. So for me, I mean, I mean, this is eight years of doing this outreach. And honestly, it's, I mean, it has not been easy, you know? I, even stakeholders have been trying to get people on board, you know? Institutions, organizations, trying to get people on board. I'm grateful because uh, whereas 10 may have said no, one said yes, you know? Mm. So those few that came on board, as I say, I've been able to do so much, you know? In fact, my time in Desta, I got so much overwhelming support from lecturers, from students, you know? Imagine my student who can buy my tissues, my drugs, his swag, you know? Like actually buy and pay for it, you know? that is support for the ministry. Mm. Lecturers, uh, in fact, oh, by the way, when I just think about my time in Desta, it, it was beautiful. It was actually an encouragement that you know I can actually get people to talk about this thing, mm. you know? So it's not been easy, but we keep doing it. Yeah. You know? we, what's, a, what's, a, what's a dream? What would you like to see, you know, uh, your ministry do? Well, uh, like, I don't know if it's a I don't know if these are things like I just dream about. <laughs> yeah, what's a dream? So, what's a dream yeah. So this ministry, we registered it as an NGO. Oh. And uh, the, okay, we've, we've, we've changed the mission time to time here and there. Like, you know, there's, there's this main thing that we want to do. It's about reaching uh, drug addicts and their families and engaging them in Christ-centered activities. Now, for me, I'm thinking about not just Aria because, uh, okay, I was in Rehab for three months, but now for me, I'm thinking, is it possible that I can have a facility where I can have these people come in? While at Wenye, they actually needed to be separated from their environment. They needed to be taken to a facility. Mm. But for me, my bigger picture is having a facility where people will come and actually get to do that thing which they like, you know? If it's sports, so yes, we are, a, we are an artistic ministry. But I see a place where whatever it is you're interested in, come and farm in. You are a drug addict, alcohol will be ruin life here. You can come and meet a mentor, someone will work with you, even invest in you. And I, 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 I get that, that's a model I'm getting from my own life. Mose, the thing that connected us was music, you know. He came in and invested in me, you know, worked with me, mm -hmm. made sure I'm making steps in life. Now I can imagine. Uh, like there's a time to uh, I had gone for a talk in a certain rehab. Then one of the guys asked me, he is a footballer, and deep down he knows how I say bigger now so easy to the same ones when I'm like they're the same one who who, who influenced him. To. So I can, immediately I just felt triumph ministries for you. So how about you come in and Nasisi you to go to me build capacity whereby we have mentors. You know I think something like the way Blaze used to do like mm. there was a lot of that mentorship nini. So whereby you come in and you find mentors. So you can still keep doing that which you love doing, your passion, mm. but in a drug-free environment. You, are, you can actually grow, you know? See, at after Zwezi a bowl, mzinga imefunguliwa. That utachapa you a bowl, but then you're also growing. You're growing spiritually, you yeah. know? You're growing in your faith, you know? So for me, that's the, you know, that's just the, the, the big picture. Yeah, and it takes many stakeholders, including uh, family members, parents. What yeah. would be your message to parents? Wow, to parents, uh, really, is to I know, I know, I I know the things we have taken you through mm. through addiction. And family members surrounding, you know, guardians and uncles and those guys who are around the addict. Yeah, you know, I've done a clip. There's a short clip I did whereby uh, just depicting typically what happens in a in in a when an addict in a family is affected. So number one, we usually the, the the father, you know, most times the men don't, you know, uh, how they don't have that emotional uh, part of them. So they just, you know, like that clip. So the way I, that skit, it's actually a skit. So the father, I call like, hey, toto, ajakuwa kienda shule, fees tu amekuwa kikula, you know? So the father is like, whoa, hajaku, you know, like mm. the father, ya nafanya duty yake ya kulipa fees, so he's like, wa, anangalia report card, the guy has not even be going to school. Haya, the brother, wewe wezi kunywa chupa mbili kama mtu wa kawaida na urudi nyumbani you know so for the brother I was just painting a picture whereby they're expecting i so kunywa drinks just be a social drinker yeah, yeah. a responsible one yeah mm. and then the sister is was crying is like oh god then yeah just loving from a distance please bring my brother back home just bring him back to us and then the mother the mother in most times is the one most affected so in that clip i'm just showing at a blood pressure in a panda, sukari in a panda, you know, they're mm, so mm, concerned. Mm. But my message to, to, to the family unit out there is that just, I know, I know it's a painful journey, 
that addicts, you know, like during that active addiction to Mwapeleka. But I just, how, how I just pray that you may find it in your heart. You know, that understanding, could you to this person, is a, is a sick person, and they, ju they just need help. In fact, the number one thing is just seek help. I know it has been hard. That one I know very, very well. I know the sacrifices you have made for that young man, uh, young lady, but they, are, they still seem to be following that route of addiction. Just don't give up. And one more thing, uh, I know prayers. There's a certain story in the Bible uh, that has this lesson whereby the faith of others heal this man. Mm. So even when that person, hata kama ajui Christ, hata ajui, ananga yo rada, hata kiasi. But you as the mother, you as the father, do you know, just don't, don't usi, usi, usi kome kunini, kumumbea. That faith, yo, that, those prayers. In fact, many addicts, when they tell you the things that they have been, be, they are like, in the course of addiction. Mm. I know of someone mwenye alikanya wakifuwa na gari. And they are, they are alive, you know, like, ali survive your story. I believe, is on zile prayers is a, the the family unit mm. so keep keep praying for that person and don't give up don't give up and keep praying then don't give up mm -hmm. what would be your final word to the to the person who may see they have a problem with alcohol watching us today but don't know where to start from now for that person my message uh, today is uh, and I'm saying this with so much conviction give yourself a chance give yourself a chance everyone you are I mean everyone believes the best for you. So give yourself a chance. Usi jirushia mkono we mwenyewe that, ah, you know, this is how I've messed up. Uh, you know, give yourself a chance. No siko in denial, even this thing about denial. Stop living in denial. Give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance to actually be the person that God created you to be. Jipatie your chance. Hmm. It's a good message, Tony. I look forward to seeing what triumph ministry will do. And I appreciate you coming uh, through on this lovely Friday. Asante, asante sana. Yeah, Tony Kibet, from drugs to drugs your swag. Na by the way, kuna beste yangu wa ako utali lakini home ni wasingishu. Staki show yeshe kama mazesi jambiga, and he's really supporting me. Ume, unapeana mazalamu? Eh, alasima kumipea ni maze, anaitua Evans. Maze Evans, maze ana support e ministry sana, and I just want to appreciate him, alongside with every single person. Now, I can't mention all of you, but you are all my family, as long as, I mean, people who've supported me, even supported the ministry in one way or another, I consider you family. Uh, and I just want to thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, you know what I would like to see us do, eh, before we close? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see us go into the, uh, into the field out there and talk to young people mm -hmm. and uh, talk specifically about how to, the indicators of how mm -hmm. to know where you have a problem mm -hmm. and how to stop. I saw someone write on Twitter recently, mm -hmm. and uh, she wrote and said, you know, she, um, she had just gone uh, dry for five months, mm -hmm. stopped drinking for five months. Yeah. And the responses were overwhelming. Guys were asking, how, how did you make it? How did you start? There are some individuals out there mm. who have seen their drinking, yeah. their drug use is a problem, mm. but are unable to stop. Mm. There are some individuals out there who are maybe experimenting, but mm. think that they are in control. They need to find out exactly what, what need to be you know, given information as to how do you end up losing control? You know, yeah, yeah. what are the underlying factors? Mm. There are individuals out there who are from, uh, lack of better words, functional drunkards. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm. they are at work right now, mm. but they have like a thing on a, something is in the drawer, yeah. they are kunyoing, or they are waiting for lunch hour to go and, ch you know, chapa a tot or two, mm. or they came with it in their handbag this morning, or they took it before they woke, woke up to unlock themselves. Mm. Huh? The guys there who are, uh, you know, the people who's drinking brings out the beast in them. Mm, yeah, you know, yeah. they are calm until they are drunk. Yeah. And then they are told stories of just how ridiculous they are mm. when they are drunk, but they are feeling so happy. So it's a lot of people there. And then, of course, all the victims, yeah, yeah. wives, husbands, mm, yeah. brothers, sisters, people around the addict who have no way of, you know, telling this guy. And then, and then of course, the ones who are in denial, mm. who can't accept they have a problem. So there's a lot of people out there. Mm. And it would be nice to have a forum with yeah. young people and just have a chat mm. and talk about, you know, the, the good, the bad, yeah. and yeah. the ugly, mm. you know? Yeah. I think we will do that with Triumph Ministry out there and, yeah. Yeah. and see what I have, a round table forum, and let's, 
tackle the drugs and alcohol story very candidly because mm. I say here on this show all the time, some people, like I told you, people mm. sometimes ask, uh, why do you want to do a show all the time on drugs and alcohol? Yeah. It's because after all is said and done, whether we go up in our jobs to the highest level yeah. or we go to the highest educational level mm. or we even the highest religious level, you name it, mm. drugs and alcohol addiction mm. can bring it all to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And it respects no one. doesn't mm. care if you're the child of a minister or the child of a border border rider. Mm. When you're addicted, you're addicted. Yeah. Same story, yeah. same WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It reduces a uh, professor into an incoherent guy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a passion, uh, a, pa uh, a passion for me, considering yeah. even I myself had to go through a rehab. In mm -hmm. fact, when you're talking about rehab, I can really feel your story. Yeah. I ran away from one, two. So yeah. I think I was, I was closing the show, but I've turned it into a personal testimony. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. well, let's do that show, shall yeah. we? Please, please. Uh, let's do it. That's uh, 59 minutes for today. It's Friday. We, of course, here want to wish you a very, very good weekend. And Tony will be back. We'll be doing a forum. We'll talk more about Mambo to do with drugs. See your swag. Stay alive. Be safe. <laughs>